Hello, my name is Justin Miller. I'm a student enrolled at Oregon State University, where I am completing my final term for a Bachelor's of Science for the School of Engineering's Electrical and Computer Engineering program. I'm a United States Navy veteran with an interest in renewable energy systems and power electronics. My future goals include acquiring a master's degree in electrical engineering and to work overseas with a focus on solar power generation technology. Hi, my name is Danielle Sitz and I'm a senior in EECS. My focus is on power systems, specifically alternative energy. Um, I've been a member of the solar vehicle team for the past four years, and I participated in both the 2010 and 2012 North American Solar Challenge races. This is a seven-day cross-country race. My goal after graduating is to move to the Big Island of Hawaii, where my family is relocating to, and enter the field of solar and wind energy systems. My name is Michael Freeman. I'm majoring in computer and electrical engineering. Uh, right now my main interests are uh, embedded programming, database design, and web design. This project was great to teach me new concepts about web design using Google Sites, and I was also able to use my knowledge of embedded systems to program our microcontroller. Uh, some other interests I have tend to be interests towards renewable energy, such as solar. For this presentation video, we're going to go over a few topics, such as project overview, engineering requirements, block diagram, project demonstration, and finally the conclusions. To begin, what does MPPT stand for and what does it do? MPPT is an acronym that stands for Maximum PowerPoint Tracker. The purpose of a Maximum PowerPoint Tracker is to extract the most power from a photovoltaic cell. Photovoltaic cells are relatively inefficient by themselves, but the MPPT was created to correct this problem. How does the MPPT accomplish this? The MPPT acts as an intermediary circuit between the photovoltaic cell and the load, whereby the MPPT's converter topology will alter the photovoltaic cell's current and voltage output to meet a peak power point. Many of the common topologies of an MPPT include a buck or boost topology. These topologies will either decrease or increase the output voltage respectively, depending on the requirements of the load. Why is our project important? Our project is important because most solar car, solar car teams use MPPTs, and currently there are very few on the market that are both inexpensive and meet the specifications that the teams have. Most MPPTs use a buck converter topology, which basically steps down the solar array output voltage in order to charge a lower voltage battery pack. Solar vehicles, on the other hand, uh, generally need to charge a battery that has a higher voltage than the voltage coming from the solar array. Therefore, we need an MPPT with a boost converter topology which steps the voltage up from the solar array voltage to a higher voltage at the battery pack. Our project is to design and build one of these boost topology MPPTs for use on the OSU solar car. Our goals for this project were to create an inexpensive and highly efficient PowerPoint tracking system. The restriction of this project included designing the MPPT to fit in the same footprint as the current solar car MPPT while implementing the same connection interface. The current solar car MPPT costs approximately $1,000 and any reduction in cost will benefit the solar car team in the long run. We also desired to make a project open source so it would be available to other engineering enthusiasts and solar car teams. Some of the key engineering requirements that we focused on for our project we're having our project meet a 95% efficiency at optimum performance. Also, showing the voltage, current, and temperature outputs on our Arduino LCD, and having the same fo footprint for mounting as the Ariel RaceMax 600B MPPT. We also wanted our MPPT to handle the six amps continuous current at the input, and it also needed to have a range of 40 to 135 volts DC with an output range of 70 to 170 volts DC. Finally, we required the cost to be less than $1,000 per unit and that our project be open source. This is our system block diagram showing the interfaces between our low level blocks. For this presentation, we're going to be focusing on the blocks circled in red. These focus on the boost converter, sensors, and microcontroller operations. The DC DC boost converter is the core of our MPPT design. The basic theory of operation for the boost converter is as follows. When the MOSFET is switched on, it creates a loop in which voltage from the array charges up the inductor. 
Then when the MOSFET switches off, the diode conducts and the inductor in turn dumps its energy into the output capacitors. This charge dump cycle continues with the output voltage reaching a steady state output of 1 over the off time times the input voltage, which is the equation for the output voltage of a boost converter. Since we want a highly efficient MPPT, we selected a MOSFET with a low on time resistance and a diode with a low forward voltage drop in order to help decrease the power loss of the system. Another key component of the MPPT are the voltage and current sensors. These sensors are necessary to ensure that the MPPT's microcontroller can accurately control the pulse width modulation scheme to reach the maximum power point. The first of these sensors are the input and output voltage sensors. These sensors were designed as simple voltage dividers. The simplicity of the design allowed us to closely monitor power loss and to make it easier to modify the sensor's range and sensitivity. The next sensor is the input current sensor. For the input current sensor, the Allegro ACS713 integrated circuit was chosen. The ACS713 operates by utilizing a Hall effect circuit. The Hall effect circuit detects the voltage potential from the magnetic field created by the input current. That voltage potential is then processed and delivered as an output voltage proportional to the input current. The low internal conductor resistance, linear output sensor scale, and small footprint allowed for more efficient and reliable design. Based on our customer's request, we used an Arduino microcontroller for our MPPT design. Due to our printed circuit board size restrictions, we ended up implementing an Arduino Micro. The Arduino Micro is readily available to acquire and it is relatively simple to program. The Arduino Micro also incorporates a large number of input and output interfaces as required by our MPPT design. Our microcontroller interfaces with the current and voltage sensors through its inputs to obtain the necessary data via voltage measurements that are read by an analog to digital converter. After some conversions using our C code, the microcontroller will send a signal to the boost circuit to either increase or decrease the output voltage depending on the location of the maximum power point. The code also outputs sensor data to the LCD where users can view the data through the LCD's button interface. So for this demonstration, I'm going to show the boosting aspect of our MPPT. Well, here's the light fixture that is connected to our load, and I have a 60 volt input for to simulate the array, and we are currently boosted to 70 volts the output, and I'm going to show you the boosting from 70 to 170 volts, which is the range for our requirements. I'm boosting using the LCD interface, currently at 85 volts, 100, we're at 48% duty cycle, okay. and 66% duty ratio, we have reached our goal of 173. You can see the light bulb fixtures, and that's our test. For this portion of our presentation, I'll be looking at how the LCD interfaces with our microcontroller. First of all, I will look at the input voltage and current. Our input voltage right now is 60 volts, and the input current is about 0.8 amps. Next, we're going to look at the output voltage, and currently we're boosting at 4%, so our output voltage is 63.27 volts. Now, we'll look at the temperature and the boost ratio, and as I said before, the boost ratio is 4%, which is shown here, and the temperature is currently 16.17 degrees Celsius. For this part of the presentation, I will be demonstrating the efficiency capabilities of our MPPT. One of our engineering requirements for the MPPT is that we have at least 95% efficiency. Now for this demonstration, I have our test load connected. I have an input voltage supply connected at about 70 volts. The 70 volts is being boosted by our MPPT at about 20% duty cycle. Now at the output, I have about 191 watts. At the input, I have about 195 watts. That gives me an efficiency of 
about 97 to 98 percent. In conclusion, our goal is to create an inexpensive, highly efficient boost topology MPPT that is open source. Our MPPT costs approximately $290, has a peak efficiency of over 95%, and all, all of our designs and bill of materials are available for anyone to use online.